What's up guys, welcome back. This is gonna be a project video and in this video we're gonna build this crossbody purse. I came up with this little pattern, I call it a little saddlebag crossbody. It's a pretty easy purse to build but it is much more involved than the wristlet purse pattern if you've built that. Then you have experience kind of using some of our patterns and stuff. This one's gonna be a little bit more involved as far as the construction. It's more of a traditionally built purse, not quite as easy as that one doesn't go near as fast. It's got a lot more tooling on it. I've got the pattern pack that we did for this project video has six different tooling patterns in it and each different pattern, it's three different pieces. So your whole front and then your pocket pattern, which you'll do two of those and then your front panel. That's just gonna be a lot of tooling. The bulk of this project is the tooling. I think I spent you know, off and on a couple of days tooling on it and then a, about a day to put it together. So it's kind of a little bit more involved, but I think it's really neat. I think it'll be a good Christmas gift item and it'll be a fun project and it's really easily modified. So if you wanted to change it, there are some changes that we'll talk about later that I wanna make or suggest that if you make this purse, you might uh, make some of those changes. But I did these little rings right here instead of like a snap. Usually a lot of purse straps have a small little snap, bolt snap on there. And I went ahead and I found these rings at Ohio Travel Bag and they're really neat. They're almost, they're like a little snap. They've got a little deal right there. And I put grommets in the top there of the purse and it just snaps in place. I like it okay. I don't know that I would do all of them that way unless the customer saw this one and liked the way that the strap was attached. I was just trying to do something a little bit different, but that can be easily modified by adding two D-rings on the back right here and then snap your, your strap however you want to or fasten it or rivet it to those little D-rings or do your D-rings on your gusset like they're no normally done. Um, you could even run a strap if you wanted to do the little tabs like we did on the round crossbody then you could just run that strap all the way around and have it come up the side. But I think this purse would be a really neat gift item for either friends, family, or some, to offer some of your customers. So let's do this video. I'm gonna show you how to build this purse from start to finish, and we'll visit more about the, some of the changes that I would suggest making at the end. So let's get to it. All right, so there's our pattern, one large main body piece, the little pocket, and then the front panel. Remember, you're gonna cut two of those little pockets out. If you got the pattern pack, it tells you exactly how many pieces you need. This is a piece of five, six ounce Herman Oak leather that I decided to use for this purse. If you're gonna line this purse, I would go ahead and stick to around a five to six ounce. If you're not gonna line it, and you just wanted to do it single ply, which would work absolutely fine, I almost did that, I would have, I would use like a 910, somewhere around there, and that would make a, a very nice weight in the purse purse would be just fine without being lined but we're going to go ahead and line this with some four to six ounce chap leather it's actually closer to four ounce and so i would leave your liner about like that about three to four ounce somewhere around there if you're going to line it and use the five six ounce for the tooled pieces All right, so here's all our pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and prep these for tooling just using our blue painter's tape. Um, if you're lining and you wanna use the poster board, you sure can, but I want that purse to have a little bit of a softer feel. So we went ahead and just used the blue painter's tape. Comes off very easily, works great. All right, and here we're gonna tool all these pieces. I did not uh, show all of the tooling in this video because it would have been way too much footage. So we're just gonna give you a little glimpse of some of the tooling and some of the die work that we did. And uh, you can kind of go from there. If you do need help with your tooling or wanna look at some of that, we've got a lot of videos on just tooling and I would suggest checking out our tooling series videos that we have. We've done three or four of those and try to do those pretty frequently, so.
Now here I'm dying. I'm doing a two-tone brown dye job on this purse and so it's one of our most popular finishes and that is actually just dark brown five beings pro oil dye and that's the type of dye that i use you do have to usually go over this stuff a couple of times maybe two sometimes three coats to get a nice even finish but that's the kind of dye that we use and it ends up turning out really good Now we've had time for our dye to kind of set in and even out and I'm just oiling this real quick with olive oil. That's what we use in the shop on almost everything. It's just olive oil. And now here I've already antiqued. I didn't save any of the antiquing footage in this video just to help cut down on some of the time. But those pieces we did go through the antiquing process and we have done a video on that. So you can go back and watch that. We'll try to put a link down in the description about that video so that you can uh, check that out if you haven't had any experience antiquing. And then right here, we're just going to go ahead and slick the top edge of our pockets. So we'll edge them, we sanded them, we'll edge them, we'll slick them, and then dye those edges as well. Now, if you'll notice, I'm only slicking the very top edge of those little pockets. The reason is because we're going to go ahead and sew those on the purse, and that the outer edge will be the part we can get to, and we can sand, edge, and slick all three layers of leather all at one time when we assemble the purse. So right now, the only thing we need to worry about is that very top edge. So that's what we'll slick and dye there. All right, and so while those edges dry before we can dye them, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my liners out for all of our pieces. The only pieces you won't line is gonna be the pockets, the little bitty pockets. So the front panel and the back panel is the only thing that you need to line. And I'm just using a not very nice chap leather that I got from Lewis Leather Sales there in Bryan, Texas. And uh, it ended up working out okay. I would have preferred to have chosen a little bit of a softer leather that actually glued a lot better, but this stuff worked out really good. It's a really beautiful leather, and uh, I thought it made a really nice liner inside this purse. But we'll just cut that a little bit oversize, and I just use the pieces that we tooled as the pattern and just cut them oversize, and we'll glue them together. And now here we're going to take that same leather. I like to use my liner leather for our gusset as well so we'll cut that gusset pattern out i've already got it sized in the pattern pack so you can cut it out true and it will fit this pattern and so we'll go ahead and get that cut out and it'll be ready to prep and put in all right so now we'll glue our liners to our front panel and our main body and we're going to go ahead and use two coats of contact cement so you'll put one coat on let that dry that coat will usually get absorbed and it's not gonna be real tacky and then we'll come back after it's dry we'll put a second coat on and then we'll be ready to stick everything together all right so that's had 10 minutes or so to dry and so we'll go ahead and put our second coat on there and then let that dry All right, so that's had time to dry. The, the coat of uh, glue is really tacky, and so we'll just glue that all in place, and um, we'll be ready to kind of start putting this thing together. All right, so here I'm just taking a glass slicker and just pressing that down really good and making sure that the glue gets stuck really nice to the liner. That'll cut down on some of the wrinkles that you might get in that fold. We're gonna go ahead and just get, maybe be sure that that's stuck really good. And then I'm gonna take my Horseshoe brand groover. That's the type of groover that I use. We are gonna sew this on the Cobra Class 4. So we're gonna go ahead and groove that front panel all the way around. It's easier to do that now than when it's in the purse. And now here on the main body, I'm gonna go ahead now and mark where my pockets are, and that way we can run a groove in there, and then we're gonna to need to scratch that leather up just a little bit since it's got finish on it, so that those pockets will glue in place nice. But I'm also gonna go ahead and groove that area in between the two pockets. And our little pockets have had time to dry as far as our edges, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of brown dye on there. I almost forgot, but I noticed them when I was putting them on there, so we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of dye there. Go ahead and do that. It'll be a lot easier to dye now than when it's in there. Now I'm just taking a little piece of sandpaper, any sandpaper's fine, and I'm just scratching the finish a little bit. That's gonna allow that glue to stick much better. 
Now we're going to put us a little bit of contact cement everywhere we scratched on there and then on the pockets as well. And we're going to do two coats on this as well. So one coat, let that dry, then come back and do the second coat and uh, we'll glue those pockets in place. And so here we're ready to go ahead and stick our pockets on. Be sure and go off your marks that you made before. Make sure everything lines up and that the pockets are on there straight. And then we'll glue those in and they'll be ready to go. Now we can take our groover and go ahead and groove the pockets all the way around where that's completely grooved and ready for our stitches. It's just going to make it a lot nicer and a little bit more professional. And I'm going to go ahead and trim off the little bit of feather that's around both of these pieces. That's going to help us during lineup when we go to assemble the purse and put the gusset in. All right, so now we'll fire up the Cobra Class 4 here, and we're just going to sew the very top edge of this front panel. We just need to go ahead and sew the top edge so we can get it slicked, edged, and dyed, and it'll be ready to put the gusset in. And again, even on this piece here, the only thing you really got to worry about right now is just the top edge. So sand, edge, slick, and dye the top edge of the front panel. All right, and right here, I'm just gonna check fit just to make sure everything is, looks okay and they're both about the same size. Add a little bit of dye to our, our top edge there. All right, now let's get our gusset prepared. And I'll take the top edge about three quarters of an inch down is what we're gonna do. So we'll go ahead and just skive that. We want that to fold over very nicely. We're gonna fold the top and then we'll sew it. And so we'll come in about three quarters of an inch from the edge and put a little swath of glue there after we get done skiving and then sew that on our little machine. That way the top edge of that gusset looks nice. All right, now our second coat of glue is dry. We'll go ahead and fold that over to our line and it should be about a three eighths of an inch fold over. And that's gonna make a really nice bead there at the top when we, when we sew that. And we'll come over here to the little Singer 3115 and we'll just sew one little line right there. Try to stay inside and don't go all the way to the edge because you will have to maybe trim a little bit of that when we assemble. All right, as I've mentioned before, you can always do D-rings on the back of the purse, but I decided to go ahead and do grommets on the top. I just thought it was a different, little different way of connecting the uh, the strap. And so we're gonna go ahead and set some grommets there. May or not, may or may not be my favorite part of the purse, but it's, it's an idea and I tried it. And so we're gonna go ahead and set grommets right here. All right, so I've got a little partial side here of some five, six ounce, and I'm just gonna cut some three quarter inch strips for making our little straps. Trick when you're doing straps, go ahead and dye one whole strip, and then you can cut your little pieces out of there instead of trying to dye just some little bitty pieces. So we're just gonna dye this whole strip, and then we'll cut what we need out of it and make our little closure strap. And after I dye that dye set up a little bit, I'll go ahead and put a little oil on it, and that way it's nice and finished. And now here, we're just gonna go ahead and cut that down. I've got all the measurements for a little strap um, in the pattern pack. So if you do get that, it'll tell you, it's not real hard to figure out exactly how long you need that, but. I 
I end punched my little straps with a round end punch instead of the English point. I thought it had a really neat little look about it, so that's what we did. And then here we're just gonna edge and slick the straps just like everything else. And then I made a couple little mock-up pieces for a pattern so I know where all my holes are going to be and all that. Again, if you get the pack, it'll have that in there as far as all the hole placements. Not really that crucial, but you can kind of see how far apart they are. I think the holes are three quarters of an inch apart. Now the little buckle that I decided to use for this purse came from Ohio Travel Bag as well. It's the same finish as the rings. And then we're just going to set that. I'm just going to punch a number two hole right there and set that with a little speed rivet um, or a little double cap speed rivet is what they're called. But they're just a really quick little, there's no reason to waste a copper rivet there. Now this little buckle strap is going to get sewn into the gusset and so I went ahead and skived the end down that's going to be inside the in between the gusset and the body and I skived that down as well because it'll go through a bag punch on the bag and we're going to fasten that little strap to the main body of the bag with a brass rivet I have a little brass rivet just so it matches the rest of the hardware and so we'll go ahead and put that in I think it's about an inch worth of material that I have going in that bag punch and we'll punch a hole and set that rivet there and that's what'll hold that strap on the back side of the body. All right, and so here's where we kind of started running into some trouble with this particular chap leather because it didn't glue very well. I had noticed it already when I was actually grading the, the gusset pattern. So what we had to do is scratch that finish up pretty good with the sandpaper again and put the glue on. As you'll see in a minute, it still didn't glue really well, so we ended up having to use some little tacks. But if you've got a decent chap leather that you're using that sticks really good, you will have no problem at all. One to two coats of glue will hold that gusset in just fine so you can sew it. Here I'm doing two coats, letting them dry in between, and then we'll stick it on. All right, so we'll go ahead and put our gusset on our front panel first. You always want to use your front panel first. We'll go ahead and stick that on there. And the gusset pattern, again, is set to the size it needs to be in the pattern pack. So if you fold over no more than three quarters of an inch, so a three eighths fold over um, when you fold that in half, you can put that bead right on the top edge of your panel and then go around. And if you're just walking around there real easily, again, if you've got softer chap leather, it'll make that corner much easier. And so we'll go all the way around here and get this tacked in place and insert our buckle strap. All right, so here we'll just kind of separate that gusset, which isn't very hard here because it's not glued down very well, but we'll separate that a little bit and insert our buckle strap. Again, probably about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch underneath the gusset, in between the gusset and the, and the panel. And then we're gonna go ahead and try to get that to where it'll hold in place. And 
And so I just got me a piece of scrap leather and some of the, these are little bitty shoe tacks. They're called clenching nails and uh, they work really well for things like this. And so we'll just put one every so often. It's just gonna hold our gusset in place while we sew it since the glue's not really doing a good job with this particular leather. And so we'll go all the way around and just be careful of, uh, of where we put them. You don't wanna put too many. And then we'll also put our buckle strap. I end up having to take it out because that glue wasn't holding it at all. So we'll get that inserted back in there and then we'll put a nail in it to hold it in place and then we'll be ready to sew it up. All right, so we're back here at our Cobra machine and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, when you're sewing with these little tacks in there, it's not very, it's not really hard. It's just gonna slow you down when you sew a little bit, but if you'll stitch right up to a nail and then you can grab your uh, little pliers and pull a nail, sew up to the next nail, pull a nail, sew up to the next nail and so on all the way around. And you'll be surprised at how many times you'll actually use this little trick when you're trying to sew up more complicated type items. But, um, it works really well. Just remember, don't hit one of those nails with that needle. If you get to sewing too fast or don't stop in time, it will break a needle. All right, so we've gotten all our stitches. We've backstitched all that, so everything's tied in. We'll cut that. Then I like to go around here with a razor blade and just go ahead and trim off any excess liner. Uh, it's a little bit less sanding that you have to do. Just be real careful when you get up to your little buckle strap. Don't nick that. But then we're just gonna kind of trim that gusset to match. And now we'll sand, edge, slick, and that entire piece, and then it'll be ready to be inserted onto the uh, main body.
All right, so we're not gonna wait for those edges to dry because we're just gonna dial the edges on this purse once we've got it assembled. It's easy enough to get to everything. So what we're gonna do here is just kinda get it on there, kinda face to face there, and that way we can make us some marks to know where the gusset needs to land on the inside of the body. And so if you'll flip it over like that and mark it, it's a lot easier. We're gonna have to, again, scratch this finish in between our marks that way the glue will stick we're going to go ahead and try the glue again but i will tell you we're going to use tacks just to be safe and make sure everything stays where it needs to stay All right, so our two coats of glue are dry, so now we'll put it to the top of our gusset there on its mark, and we'll just start doing the same as we did on the front panel, as we're walking it around, trying to keep everything as straight as possible. Try not to stretch your gusset one direction or the other when you're putting these in. Just try to pull them down to the body and get everything, and then you should land at your mark on your other side as well. And so we'll get everything making the corners and laying in there flat. All right, so our gusset's in. It did glue a little bit better than the last time, not by much, but a little bit, but we're still gonna use these tacks. And so we'll just go around there, make sure everything stays where you want it. If, at any, if anything, you really want that gusset to stick out a little bit, or especially in the corners, uh, um, so that when you're sewing it, you've got a little bit of a feather. I'd rather have it sticking out a little bit than kind of trying to drag in a little bit because you can't see that. And sometimes you'll, in the corner, your gusset, you'll, you'll stitch outside of it. And so you won't have it sewed down. So a little bit of overhang isn't bad. Right. and so we're just kind of making sure it all looks square this is a good opportunity on any kind of purse or bag to make sure everything's square and that the bag looks square so we're back here on the cobra and we'll start there on the back side we'll sew our gusset first and we're just going to make one big loop we're going to sew around that entire purse flap and everything in one stitch and so we'll, as we sew around here we'll have to sew a little bit get up to a nail pull it sew to the next nail pull it um, you want to be real careful and real sure that those nails do not fall down into your sewing machine where the shuttle is because they can really wreak havoc. So if you're using those tacks, just be real careful that you kind of pitch them over to the side or preferably in a little trash can if you've got one handy.
All right, so we've gotten that gusset sewn in all the way, and so we'll trim our stitches right quick. And then again, I'm gonna go through and just kind of trim any excess of that gusset that may be hanging out there. And then we'll sand, edge, slick, and dye all the way around uh, all of our edges now that the purse is assembled. All right, and we're just dyeing these edges here with just dye beings, dark brown pro oil dyes, all I use on my edges. And then that little spot there, we're just catching that with a paintbrush. You could probably dye that edge right there before you assemble it and make it a little bit easier. But, And then I'm just gonna take a little tan coat and um, freshen it up and get the edges and get our gusset and liner and all that stuff. All right, so here I've got a side of nine, 10 ounce, and I'm just gonna pull off here a one inch strip and that's gonna make our strap. So we'll just square up that end right there, measure out, I think I cut this strap 48 inches, uh, 52 inches would probably work a little bit better, but then we're, I'm just kind of freehanding a little scalloped end there, and I'll have that pattern in the pattern pack as well, but you could certainly do anything you wanted to here as far as the, the way the strap attaches to those little deals. We'll go ahead and cut this. Just makes it a little nicer looking than just being straight.
And here I'm just gonna go ahead and dye our strap and I'm just using the dark brown, same color we've been using. I'm just gonna put a nice even coat on there. We've already edged this strap, so we'll go ahead and slick all the edges and then get those dyed as well. Now we'll go ahead after our edges have dried and we'll go ahead and put a little light coat of olive oil on here. I am gonna do the front and the back of this strap. Since we're not lining it, we'll go ahead and put a little oil on the back as well. And now a little coat of tan coat to seal everything up, finish it off. Now with our little rings, it's real simple. We'll just go ahead and punch a hole in there and we'll set a number nine copper rivet and that's how I'm attaching it. You can certainly attach this any way you'd like. Do a copper rivet here and uh, since our rings have the little clip we don't really have to have them in there. We just need enough space to slide that ring in there. And there's our finished strap. Now we'll just take our little rings and we'll just slide them right there on each end and they'll be ready to attach to the bag. And I really like these little rings. They really attach really nicely to those grommets. Real simple, it's like a little snap but it's a round ring. And that's our purse. It's pretty well finished up and ready to go. So that's building a saddlebag crossbody. I hope you enjoyed that video. Like I said, it is a little bit more involved. So let's talk about some of the changes real quick. Again, the strap, you could do that a number of different ways. And that's something very easy to modify. You could add D-rings here, like I said, you could do uh, D-rings back here and, and attach your strap, however you really wanted to do it. This purse really, if you just wanted it to be kind of just a handheld purse, you could just sew on a handle right there and that may be enough too. But I think the cool thing about the shape of this bag and the look of it is it kind of looks like a little saddle bag. And so I think the crossbody aspect of it is, is uh, the way to go personally. But the other thing that I would do is I would change where we place the pocket the second pocket so this purse has a pocket on the back which i like because you can put your keys in there or something just real quick if you don't want to get into the purse you can put something in right there i ended up putting it on the front flap because i thought that would be a good place for it but really since i don't carry a purse i don't really know functionality wise you know i'm not using one so i don't think about things sometimes but my wife did mention like if you've got a bunch of stuff in here say keys or your cell phone or something you ought to open the purse some of that stuff's likely to fall out so that's probably not the best place i like the way it looks with a pocket on both sides when it's closed but that's probably not the best place for the front pocket so in the pattern pack that we created this pattern is in there the, to build this purse just like this the same tooling pattern and everything's in there but on the other five tooling patterns that are in there i changed it to where you'll tool the whole front of this flap and then this pocket will instead put on this front panel here. 
so it'll be behind the flap when it's closed. And I think that's probably the better spot for it because when you put it right there, then you can put whatever you need and then when the purse closed, it's not gonna fall out. When you open the purse, it's still all right there. It's not gonna fall out. You've still got quick access to the one on the back. So I think that's probably the better way to do it. If I build it again, that's probably the way I'll do it unless a customer wants this exact version. But to me, that's, that's gonna be the better place for the front pocket. The other thing that I would suggest is you probably saw I was kind of fighting with this particular leather for the gusset. This was some really nice chap leather. There was nothing wrong with it, but it didn't glue very well. And anytime you're gluing a gusset up, that's one thing to keep in mind is the, the type of leather that you decide to use for the gusset, you really want it to glue really well or else you end up having to use nails, which is what I ended up having to do was using little tacks to hold it in place, which is fine, but it makes sewing it a little bit more tricky. And so I would suggest using more of a chrome tan instead of an oil tan type leather here. Even a suede would work really nice. Just something that's gonna stick really good. So when you put your glue on there and you glue your gusset in, it's not gonna move. You'll get a lot better sewing job by using that type of leather here. I'd also like to have seen it a little softer. It felt like it was gonna be soft enough, but this stuff was a little bit firmer, had a little bit firmer temper to it, and so it didn't really lay really the way I wanted. It'll break in nicely and it'll be fine. But if I was to do this again, I would definitely pick a different, a different type of chap leather to use right there. So keep that in mind. The one suggestion my wife had when we were done with this purse is that she wants one of these just like this, but she would like to have a belt basically for the strap. You could do it lighter. So usually my belts are 910 lined with 34 for a strap on a purse like this. I would probably narrow the width of that belt as well. Maybe go one and three eighths. This is a one inch strip. Be a little bit wider where you can get a little bit more tooling on there, but I would probably not line that. I would just tool it like it as if it was a belt and then put it on because that would look pretty neat. I thought since this strap was smooth here, I would just leave this strap smooth for this video project, but she's right, a belt, you know, if you tool just like you would any other belt with painting on it or whatever you wanted to do, it would look really neat as a crossbody. So that's one other suggestion there. But all in all, the project went together really well. I was really happy with it. It's it's not a, a terrible build. It's it's pretty fun. It's pretty much like building any other kind of little purse or bag, particularly saddlebags for us because we've built quite a few saddlebags over the years. And so it went together pretty much just like that. Uh, you certainly don't have to line it if you don't want to line it. You just use a, a nice weight leather um, and make a little lighter duty bag. Be a little faster, probably pull your cost down a little bit and you could sell it at a little cheaper price point. But that's something to think about. But that's our project video. We are pretty well rolling in the shop. Everything's set up. We've been working on saddles, trying to get the showroom all set up. We've been doing some painting and stuff like that. It's been fun, but we've also been able to get a couple videos out. If you saw the last video that we did, which was the putting on the swell cover with one piece, that video did really well. A lot of people have been waiting for that video. Now we finally got this project video done and we wanted to get that out to you. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember that Christmas is coming, so um, we're going to be doing some more project videos on smaller items to try to help you get some more options for your customers and, and have pattern packs so that you can build these projects easily and videos to go along with that for Christmas season because everybody's always going to be looking for that unique gift for somebody that, uh, you know, they call you and they want to get something unique, which belts are always good. So we've got a lot of belt patterns on our website as well. But we want to do some unique items, too. We're going to try to work in some more of those project videos throughout the rest of the season. But we appreciate you guys watching this project video, and we'll see you in the next video.